Hello there. This is Welsh ASMR 82. Hey, how are we doing? So, I haven't done a, a match reading video uh, yet on this channel. So this is a first. We've done lots of other magazine readings. Um, 442, for example, I've done a couple of times, and you seem to really enjoy that, so... Slightly different publication, but still very good, and we will take a good look at that. And also, we'll start off... A couple of you asked me about um, doing sticker packs and stuff in the past. Should we do that bit to begin with? I did intend to do it during the World Cup and do the World Cup sticker thing, but um, some other stuff was going on, unfortunately, at the time. Oh, there's a train gone past now. The train has gone past. They come up a bit easier. Ooh. Okay, so I've got one world class sticker from Zeki Amdouni of Burnley. Gold sticker, uh, Aston Villa and Newcastle. I've got Fabio Silva, the Portuguese player, number nine, right-footed, forward for Wolves, 1.85 metres. Got another Burnley card, Belgian player Amin Aldachil, centre-back number 28. Watkins. Aston Villa forward. Hear a little rumour that Arsenal want him in the summer. Um, 180 metres tall, England. I think he's going to be caught up in the next international window as well. To play for England. Okay, so I don't know. I don't know what the significance significance of that card is. So I don't have the sticker book. Right. There's loads of stick. Um, this this magazine is sort of aimed at um, younger football supporters. So there's like posters to stick up on your wall. We've got now. You would say Griezmann. I would say Griezmann uh, of Atletico Madrid and Saliba of Arsenal. And there's Joao Felix or Felix. No, I think it's Felix of. Oh. Barcelona. Might be fairly actually. Okay, contents. I already had a flick through and there's one thing we're definitely going to look at, and it's the top Champions League scorers. It satisfies if you don't if you haven't seen my map channel, then you'll understand. Then you won't understand why I'm obsessed with maps and stuff, but um, there's MLS kickoff. Um, some funny photos, EFL Cup Final, and Gold Machines. So we'll take a look. We'll flick through, we won't read all the articles. I am not being sponsored, so I would say to you, go out and buy this for yourself. So, we're talking about the Champions League last 16. This is five massive talking points. David against Goliath, so that's referring to... Uh, Copenhagen taking on Manchester City. The Gunners in the last 16, the Arsenal. Um, so they've been into the knockout round in 16 at the past. Sorry. Oh, I see. 
So Arsenal have been the knock knocked out in the Champions League round of 16 in their past seven attempts. The last time they reached the quarterfinals of the competition were back in 2009-10 when they happened to beat Porto. And of course that's who they've got. Inter's history lesson. Um, this match with Atletico Madrid will be Inter's first Champions League knockout match against a Spanish side since 2009-2010 in the semi-final. Which is already using to eliminated Pep Guardiola's Barcelona. Um, strugglers face off Barcelona against Napoli. Napoli, if you didn't hear, have just sacked their second coach and appointed their third coach of the season. Not the year, but the season. And obviously, Xavi, we talked about before on this channel, is leaving Barcelona in the summer. Dangerous underdogs, Real Sociedad. Maybe outside the top four in Spain, but they've showed in the Champions League group stage that they cannot be underestimated by Paris Saint-Germain. So a little article there, but someone I've never heard of actually, Adam Morton, Crystal Palace's new wonder kid, saying that he's made his England under-19 debut already. And they paid 18 million for him, 18.5 million. Big match in the Women's Super League between Chelsea and Man City. And I think that match... Hap Did it happen last Friday? Or was it happening this Friday? I can't remember. Friday 16th. Oh yeah, it's happened already. I'll look at the results video this week and find out how they did. Dundee's Armando Broya, Chelsea to Fulham on loan, Matt Sells, Strasbourg to Nottingham Forest, 5.1 million. Alejo Beliz, Tottenham to Sevilla on loan, Enes Unal, Getafe to Bournemouth on loan, Calvin Phillips, Man City to West Ham on loan, Mangala, Nottingham Forest to Lyon on loan, Lyon. Obviously, they've been in terrible trouble this season, they've reinforced quite well. Mason Holgate, Everton to Sheffield United on loan, Bayistri, from Man United to Granada on loan, Ribeiro, Sporting to Nottingham Forest on loan, Dani Munoz, Genk to Crystal Paris, 8.5 million, Giovanni Reina, Dortmund to Nottingham Forest on loan, Saeed Ben Rama, West Ham again to Lyon on loan, Fornals from West Ham to Real Betis for 6.8 million, and Laura Brown, Aston Villa to Man City for 200,000. In there about Jurgen Klopp, his iconic celebrations. Some jokey sections here, and some more jokey sections here. We'll skip to. This section is talking about the top goal scorers at the moment, so there isn't much to separate the top scorers in the Champions League this season. So let's check out the hottest challenges. So we've got the reigning champ, um, Haaland, Erling Haaland. Five goals at the minute, 84 minutes per Champions League goal. Haaland scored his 40th Champions League goal in just 35 appearances as well. Harry Kane, who's Team by Munich are going through a little bit of a struggle at the minute. Lost their last three games on the bounce. As well as his four goals in the Champions League group stage, Kane also grabbed three assists. So one fewer than Haaland. And a longer between goals, which kind of surprises me a little bit. Minutes per Champions League goal, 133. Jude, hey Jude, uh, for Real Madrid, four goals in 112 minutes. Only three players scored more Champions League goals before turning 21 than Bellingham. Uh, Antoine Griezmann for Atleti, he's got five goals and he's got 92 minutes. So just behind the 84 of Haaland. And then 
Mbappe. Three goals only so far, 180. So he's got the most, um, his longest time between goals. But he's the only player with over 50 touches in the opposition box in the Champions League this season. So those are the main runners. Let's see the outsiders. Morata, if you know, if you watch this channel regularly, you know that I'm not a fan of Morata. I think that he just he just misses too many. Morata's 73% shot accuracy in the Champions League this season is higher than Haaland's. Yeah, I know because he he can do it, but then the next minute he'll miss an open goal. Five goals, 89 minutes between goals. Um, but again. I just wouldn't put my money anywhere, near. not that I gamble, but if I did, I wouldn't put it on Morata. Galenu for Porto, converted winger into a striker, four goals, 110 minutes. Um, Gabriel Jesus for Arsenal, four goals, 81. So his goal ratio is actually better than Haaland's. <laughs> I, can, I just paused the video because I was like, what's that noise? My dog is sleeping outside of the door. I've shut the door. And she's basically now laid down outside my door and is snoring. So if you can hear a weird noise, it's her snoring. Okay, Julian Alvarez. Four goals, but a goal every 39 minutes. His minutes per goal ratio is better than any other 23-24 star with two or more goals. He's having a sensational time. Uh, Openda for Leipzig, uh, four goals, 102 minutes. All of his goals in the group stage came from shots inside the penalty area. And Shaw fairly Barcelona, three goals, 106 minutes. I don't see it being him. He scored a brace and bagged an assist on his Champions League debut for Barcelona. And then Chiro Immobile. Now, if I'm right in thinking, he's already scored. He scored against Bayern, didn't he? Did he? I think it was him. So he's up to 424 in the Champions League game against Feyenoord. In November, he scored his 200th goal for Lazio. What a servant he's been to that club. Okay, this is the thing I wanted to have a look at. So the Champions League top scorers by country. So let's start with Europe. But then we've got all the other continents as well, which is really cool. So we've got, are they, are they gone in, okay, I'm just trying to work out the number order, so 10, but it's not the 10th best. Okay, we'll just start with Europe, so maybe they just refer to the countries. Okay, so Rommel, Lukaku, 18 goals, Belgium. Edin Dzeko, Bosnia, 29 goals. Berbatov, Bulgaria, with 13 goals. I must suspect they're mostly for Man United, but he, did he play for Tottenham in the Champions League as well? I've got quite a lot of Spurs subscribed to this channel there, let me know. Mario Mandzukic, Croatia, 21. Michalis Konstantino, 11 goals. I'm thinking he would have played for one of the Greek clubs, not a Cypriot club. Pavel Nedvid. Juventus, 15 goals. Wayne Rooney, 30 goals. Yari Littmanen will be in Liverpool, 23 goals. Benzema, 90. Basically, actually, I was going to say all for Real Madrid, but no, he would have done a couple for Lyon first, wouldn't he? Müller, 53. Mitroglou, 14. A couple of different clubs at Mitroglou. Did he play for Benfica, maybe? Inzaghi, 46 goals. Wow, that's an incredible number. Pucinic for Montenegro, 10 goals. He played in Italy as well. Van Nistelrooy, 56, wow. 53 actually for Muller, I've missed, um, well, 90 is clearly the... <laughs> Erling Haaland, 40. Lewandowski, 92. Ronaldo, 140. That is insane. Roy Keane, 12. And I think that, you know, Robbie Keane would have had, well, I suppose. As far as a striker, I didn't have more goals than a defensive midfielder. 
Kitty and Stankovic, 11, but same thing for Serbia, I suppose. He was, Stankovic was in midfielder, Slavko Zahovic, 11 goals. Then we got Raul, legend, for Real Madrid, 71. Ibrahimovic, 48, loads of clubs. Akan Chukur, 13. Shevchenko, 48. Well, I was surprised about Ryan Giggs with 28, not Bale, for Wales. Okay, Asia. So, these two are cu very current. This one is not. Um, Meditaremi, Iran, 10, so that would be for Porto. Son, for South Korea, 19. That would be a mix of Bayer Leverkusen and Spurs. But Mats Ma Maxim Shatsky, Uzbekistan, 11 goals. They were for Dinamo Kiev, if you're interested. And he played for them during one of their best times in the Champions League modern era. But, yeah, we haven't had a more recent one for Uzbekistan yet. Africa then. Uh, Riyad Mahrez, Algeria, 20 goals. Samuel Etun, 30 goals. Mohamed Salah, 44. Aubameyang, 17. Michael Essien, 11, Didier Trouba, 44, George Weah, 11, Sadio Mane, 27, and Adebayo, 11 goals. The CONCACAF, uh, Javier Hernandez, 14 goals, and Dwight York, 11. I think they're both for Man United, aren't they? And South America, Leo Messi, 129, so Ronaldo was 140. Neymar, 43. Alexis Sanchez, 17. Jackson Martinez, 13. I'm surprised on that one. I thought it would be Falcao. I think Falcao's got the most goals in the Europa League, though. Maybe of anyone, not just Colombians. Oscar Cardozo, 11. Claudio Pizarro, 21. Most of a Bayern, I think. And Edson Cavani, 35. Very interesting. I wonder who the Canadian would be. Maybe it would be Bayern's player. My dog is snoring so loudly outside the door. Um, okay, everything you need to know about the MLS. So we are about to kick off in Major League Soccer for another season. Okay, so how does it work? I need to do one of these videos on it. How does it work? The regular season starts in February and runs through to October, with 29 teams split into two leagues, the Western and Eastern Conferences. Then what? The team with the best record of all 29 clubs is crowned the supporters' shield winners. So they're basically the best team overall. But that doesn't make them the MLS champs. The top teams in each conference will advance to the playoffs, which start in October and ends with the showpiece on December 7th. So you're, because there's two Premier Leagues, depending on which side of the country you're in, and the Canadians are in it as well. Three Canadian teams. So basically you have to win your conference, so your side of the Premier League, and then you go into a playoff to be the best of the two. But it's not just the champion that goes, it's like, it was extended for the first time last year, so I think it's like the top, at least six, maybe even eight on something like that now. Going. So you could technically be the best team in the MLS, but not win your own division. So the teams in the Western and Eastern Conference are as follows. So we got Austin, Colorado, Dallas, Houston Dynamo, LA Galaxy, Los Angeles, LAFC, Minnesota, Portland Timbers, Real Salt Lake, San Jose Earthquakes, Seattle Sanders, St. Louis City, Sporting Kansas, and Vancouver, the Canadian. Vancouver Whitecaps. And then on the Eastern we've got Atlanta, sorry, Atlanta, I keep saying that. Chicago Fire, Cincinnati, Charlotte, Columbus Crew, DC United, Inter Miami, Montreal of Canada, Nashville, New England Revolution, New York City, New York Red Bulls, Orlando City, Philly Union, and Toronto, again of Canada, so one. So we've got some new signings out in the States. There have been tons of movement during the transfer window with some new stars ready to play MLS footy for the first time, which would replace footy with soccer. Tottenham legend 
Hugo Loris has moved to LAFC. Sweden winger Emil Forsberg has joined New York Red Bulls from um, Leipzig. And Luis Suarez has signed for Inter Miami from um, Gremio, I think he was at, in Brazil. But he's going to join up with Messi and the other Barcelona players. Top five teams. LA Galaxy have uh, five MLS Cups, four Supporter Shields and two US Open Cups. I guess the US Open Cup is like our FA Cup. The Supporter Shield, I can't remember which one's which. Ah, so the port Supporter Shield when you win your side of the division and the MLS is when you win the whole shebang in the playoffs. DC United is second with four, four and three. Columbus Crew with three, three and one. Sporting Kansas with two, one and four. And Seattle Sounders with two, one and four. Turn over for our Inter-Miami profile. Let's have a little look at Messi, shall we? Yeah, this is what I was alluding to earlier on. The band is back by signing Luis Suarez. Inter Miami now have four of Barcelona's 2015 Champions League winning starting 11 in their side. The Uruguay hitman joins up with former teammates Leo Messi, Sergio Bujets and Jordi Alba to make it the most star-studded squad in the MLS. And obviously you may be aware that it's Beckham's team, so celeb owner, Search of Silverware since they started playing in 2020, because they're a relatively new club. They've never finished higher than 6th in the Eastern Conference or 12th in the race for the Supporters' Shield. Um, they did win their first ever piece of silverware last year in the League's Cup, while they were runners-up in the US Open Cup too. And I think they're participating in the um, Champions League at uh, CONCACAF Champions League this year, are they? The GAFA. Um, so Tata Martino was manager of Barcelona between 2013-14. He's an Argentinian and he, the Argentine left before Suarez joined from Liverpool. Hmm. So Eastern Conference record so far, 10th, 11th, 6th and 14th. They were basically bottom until they got messy last year and then they started winning. We've picked Nashville Stadium. This issue is it pronounced Geodis? Geodis Park? Nashville down there in Tennessee. Um, did you know it's the largest footy specific ground in the United States or, or Canada? I thought it said United States of Canada. That would be a funny misprint. Its nickname is the Castle. Uh, it was in Nashville, Nashville, built in 2022, 30,000 capacity. So there are larger stadia, but basically they are shared with, like, a College Football America vote. It hosted two of the 2023 She Believes Cup matches. It also serves as a major concert venue. Some cool information, nearest neighbour, Atlanta United, in the state of Georgia, which is just us there. And then the longest league journey is um, Montreal, 1,100 miles away. So Montreal, sort of up in this direction, I believe. And it's quite cool because it says collect all 15s they're doing. Oh, so they, I think they've done these ones then. So they've done, or maybe they've done all those. So the yellow for Nashville, so yeah, I must have done all those. So there's some build-up to the EFL Cup final, which is taking place on the 25th, so I think this video is possibly going to come out on that day. So... Liverpool have qualified for their 14th League Cup final, which is four more than any other club. And Chelsea have now reached 
the final of the year, fell cup for the tenth time in their history, putting them second in all-time charts behind Liverpool. Liverpool's road to the final. Liverpool beat Leicester, Bournemouth, West Ham, and then Fulham over two legs. Whilst Chelsea beat Wimbledon, Brighton, Blackburn and Newcastle on penalties, and then Middlesbrough held quite a large result in the semi-finals. Good luck to both teams. And here it's telling you about what to watch. Champions League games on this side. Man City, Chelsea, which was the other day. Arsenal, Newcastle, which is this weekend. Match predictor. That's going to be an interesting one. Bayern Munich against Leipzig because Bayern Munich are in such bad form at the minute. I, I think Leipzig might be able to get a result there, maybe a draw. Equally, Milan against Atalanta. Milan lost at home to Monza last weekend, whereas Atalanta are really um, trying to catch up with them. Third place against fourth place. I think Atalanta could also get a result. So about clothing. Oh, behind the badge, Luton Town. The club was formed in April 1885 when the two clubs Luton Wanderers and Luton Excelsior merged into one that moment to celebrate on the badge. The straw hat gives the club its cool nickname, the Hatters. Luton was known for making those types of hats. As the industry grew, the town became known as the Centre of Hatters. Yeah, they had a lot of factories to make hats. The original emblem of the club of Luton actually has red and blue quarters but the club changed the colours to orange and blue in 2009 to match the colours of the team. The crest in the middle is based on the town emblem of Luton. Don't be fooled by the B in the middle of it. All it stands for is industry. Hmm. Oh, I suppose bees are very industrious. While the icons around it show how the town was known for its straw manufacturing. So we've got straw. And oh, it's interesting, we've got the white drawers and the fizzle. But it's got the crest there straight there. I suppose it is a good change to change it from red to orange if they don't play in red. And then some games. Ooh, this one's difficult. So I want to say. Manuel no oh, oh, they are all Bayern Munich megastars. Manuel Neuer, Matthijs de Licht. Who's oh. Joe's that? Hmm. It's easier with the eyes, isn't it? These ones are much harder. on Richarlison. True or false, he began his career with Argentinian mega club Boca Juniors. I doubt it. He's Brazilian. Name the first English club he joined back in 2017. Well, Everton. But Everton bought him, didn't they? For the life of me, I can't remember where he, Everton bought him from. How many league goals did he score for Everton? In 135 games. It's quite a lot, I think. Was it like 67. How many goals did he score in his Champions League team for Spurs? One, two, or three? Um, I think 
he scored two. Who did he score? Who did he score his six as a kick at the 2022 World Cup against Serbia, South Korea, Ghana? Now they lost to South Korea, didn't they? They hammered Serbia in the opening match and they must have beaten Ghana. I'm going to say Serbia. Which feathered animal does his LOL iconic celebration impersonate? I can't remember. I don't know enough about Richarlison. <laughs> and then we'll finish off with the posters at the back. Ooh, did you know first? Champions League special Bukayo. Saka is the third player on record to score, both to score and assist in three consecutive home games in the Champions League. Sevilla defender Sergio Ramos scored the 10,000th goal in Champions League history. Lamin Yamal could become the first 16-year-old to be involved in a Champions League knockout round. Man City have had 100 more shots than they faced in the Champions League this season. City's opponents, FC Kubenholm, Copenhagen, have the worst shots taken versus shots faced, differential of any side to reach this year's round of 16, minus 15. 17. No player created more chances in the group stage than Lazio's Luis Alberto. 3.09. There were over three goals a game on average in this year's group stage. It was a really good group stage, wasn't it? And then 24 plus Napoli's Chvitra, Kvaraz Chelia, i to slow down to say his name, everyone just calls him Kvara, leads the way for the most Champions League dribbles completed, well that doesn't shock me. So you got Mbappe, on the back page we've got Alvarez, and then we've got Rodrigo and Musiala. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favour and click like. Leave me a comment, answer any of my questions, and let me know if you enjoyed the video. And um, I hope that you're nice and relaxed, or just enjoy the video. Either way, take care, and I'll see you again really soon, okay? Bye.